Hi, we're going to create a couple assemblies utilizing Lego parts. The Lego parts can be found at from the uh, education site of Carnegie Mellon University. This is the uh, address up here and if you go under the parts side you can download either the commercial or the educational. The parts are much the same uh, and you typically want to download all the parts and they'll come down as a zipped folder. All right, and then what I've done is I have taken the zipped folder and placed it into the location of my working directory. The first thing we're going to create is this four bar mechanism. And to show you what it's going to utilize, I'm going to utilize uh, the drag tool. And I will click on one of the members and show that the four bar mechanism indeed rotates around. The four bar is connected or comprised of a grounded initial 15 uh, hole bar and we have a 5 hole, an 11 hole, and another 15 hole bar that are all connected together utilizing constraints. So let me go ahead and show you how I create this part. I'm going to open up a new selecting assembly and you have different choices for the subtype. We're just going to use the design and of course you can create your own name if you want. You can make this called 4 bar. Uh, I'm going to say OK. And I actually had my uh, planes turned off, so let me turn those back on and my coordinate system back on. So you notice that when you're in an assembly, we have a slightly different name for the default planes. They're assembly front, assembly top, assembly right, and an assembly default coordinate system. So I'm going to go in to the icon over here on the right to add a component to my assembly and I'm already into my folder over here. So in my folder I've created one called Lego Parts which is from the zipped folder. I'm going to go in here and you notice that you do have a preview button here so you can see the few things that you have located in here. And the part that I want is beam underscore 15 and you can move the part around and take a look at it here. And I'm going to click open. So now that I, because I am using Creo Elements, if you're using Pro-E, you don't have this ability to drop the part somewhere, but I'm just going to drop the part. And instead of working with selecting the planes to put it together into a correct orientation, I'm going to go onto here under Automatic, and I'm just going to select Default. And what the default is going to do is it's going to lock the part coordinate system directly to the assembly coordinate system. So I'm going to do that and my part color turns yellow and up here under the status it says that it's fully constrained. And when I say OK to do that, you'll notice that if I try to go to the drag component option here, I see that I have options for clicking on all these things that highlight, but if I click on them, I nothing gets selected. And you see over here in the um, notes that it says you may not drag a model belonging to the ground body. So this part becomes the ground of my assembly. So I'm going to close this out. Let me shrink this window a little bit because it's cutting off a little bit. There we go. We see everything now. So now what I'm going to do is since I don't need to look at my planes or coordinate systems anymore, I'm going to turn those off. And to this grounded body now, I need to bring in another part. So I'm going to come over here to the add component to my assembly and the one that I want to bring in now is a beam underscore five and I'll say open and now again I have the ability to drop my part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow to utilize all the I'm essentially allowing pro E to decide what should be the natural constraint. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select this surface of the grounded part and I'm going to rotate to connect or to find the part that I'm going to want to be able to mate together. And indeed that is what the program assumes. It assumes that I want to mate the parts together and it takes and gives me a natural default. I could come in here and tell them that I want them to be coincident to each other. You see there's their coincidence. Or I could come in here and give them a bit of an, an offset. So maybe an offset of one I'll work. Now I'm showing the status as being partially constrained which is what I want but I, at least I want one more constraint here to tell the center of this part to be coincident to the center of this part. 
Now I could do this by turning my axes back on and selecting axis 20 to axis 4, but I'll do that for the next part that we've put in here. Right now I'm going to select any one of these cylindrical surfaces, this one, this one, or this one, all define the center of this circle. So I'll select this one, and to show that I can, I'll select this surface over here. And the ability of the constraint is that is creating an insert. And you'll notice that it says partially constrained. Yours might show being fully constrained and the part might be yellow. That would be because under the placement tab, you have under status that assumptions have been allowed, which means that they're assuming that this surface and this surface should be aligned together. But we're going to turn that off. See, if I put it on, I would show the status as being fully constrained and my part being yellow. I'm turning that off. And while we're in here, we might as well show that the mate constraint is accessible here. Here's beam underscore 5 showing the surface that's been selected. And here's beam underscore 15, and it shows the surface that's been selected. And if I come over here to the other one, the insert constraint, I again can select show which surfaces are part of this um, constraint set. So I'm going to say OK over here on the check mark and I can verify that my part is only partially constrained by going up to the drag menu and selecting somewhere here and I indeed can move my part back and forth. So I'll say OK and close and one thing I want to note over here on the model tree, here's the model tree for my four bar assembly. It contains the assembly planes, the assembly coordinate system. Beam 15 is the ground part. Now you see this little square icon here. That's indicating that beam 5 is only partially constrained. But in this case, I want it to be partially constrained. All right, now I'm going to go in here and do the exact same thing, bringing in beam underscore 11. And I'll drop the part here. I'll come in here, select this surface, and this surface. Again, it wants to mate them and gives them a really, really far um, offset. So again, I'm going to change my offset to 1. And in this case now, I'm still a partially constrained, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my axes, my axis visibility, and I will come in here and select this center axis, A4, and I will let it be snapped to the center axis of the other part, which happens to be A4 too. It's not always going to be the case, but in this case it is. And we get a slightly different constraint here. It's not an insert constraint, but it is an aligned constraint showing the, essentially a concentric alignment. And I'll say, and again, the status is partially constrained. If again, it's not, you want to verify that your status under allow assumptions is turned off. So I'm going to say OK. And again, I'm going to turn my axes off because it really clutters up the screen. I'll go to my drag menu. And I can again drag the part, again saying OK and close. And now the last part I want to put in is going to link these two together. Now I'm going to need three constraints, an alignment constraint to set the location of the part, and then a insert constraint here and an insert constraint here. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll bring in a beam underscore 15, drop it in place. Now I'm going to do something slightly different here. I'm going to select the front surface of this one and the front surface of this one, and it is going to assume an alignment between the two parts. But what I really want to do is have this thing be mated, so I'm going to flip it such that the part, the faces are facing each other, and I'll set the offset distance to be 1. Okay, now I'm just going to select the inner surface of this one and the inner surface of this one to allow myself to create an insert constraint. And all I need to do to finish the part is to select the inner surface of this one and the inner surface of this one. And I've created my assembly. So I'll say that I'm done. Notice it's still partially constrained. 
come over here to take a look at your model tree and you'll see that the initial beam is fully constrained but you have three additional beams that are only partially constrained and now you can go to the drag menu and you can move the input link all the way around now if you should select this link over here it's only going to let you move it so far and it'll actually get jammed up so then you can come over here and grab another part to locate around. So you have to make sure that you can choose the correct linkage that'll allow you for full range of motion. So we'll say OK and close. And now the last thing to do is if you wanted to change the colors of your parts, you can come over, select the part, come up here under the color marble, and you can select some different colors for your parts just to make it look less like a gray, um, uh, model and you can give it some color just to make it more interesting for yourself and then of course you can come through and move the part around. Okay, I purposely have not used any of the connector pins because I wanted to make the point that you are utilizing uh, geometric constraints to put your parts together. If we put in the physical pegs that would be required for a Lego model, there those are physical pins that do the same thing and they provide the physical constraints such as what we're doing with our mate and align and insert. Okay, well thank you very much and that concludes this video.